Okay, in this video I'd like to show you how to prove Stefan's law and that says that the, the uh, intensity of a black body spectrum is, is equal to sigma times t to the fourth where sigma is a constant and in order to do that we need to first look at the energy density so the formula I've written here is something I'm not going to prove and it's called the, the energy density per unit frequency, frequency interval so where, where this is the Greek letter nu and often we'd actually use f instead, f being the frequency so this is the frequency and that will give you, if you plug in a particular value of frequency, it will give you the, the energy density of that particular frequency. Uh, that, that particular frequency. So in order to get all of the possible levels of frequency, what we need to do is integrate this uh, across, all, um, across all frequency values. And of course, what we're going to get is a black body spectrum. So we're going to get something which looks like this. All right, and we're talking about having um, the frequency on the, the x-axis and we're talking about the intensity on the y. All right. And what we'll do, for example, if we plug in a particular value for intensity, you're going to get the corresponding y value, and you do it again and get the corresponding y value. And by summing all of these, of course, you're able to get the total intensity, and this is done, of course, by integrals. So what me that means is that in order to get the, the total energy, or excuse me, not the total energy density, but the, the total energy, we need to integrate this d nu, all right, from uh, we'll say negative infinity to positive infinity, like so. Now this it, it isn't actually a very easy integral to do. Now the way we will do it is absolutely very simple, but to actually do it just from 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 scratch is actually quite difficult to do. The first thing you need to notice here is that you need to be able to manipulate this formula. Now initially, like you might be you might be tempted to to try and integrate this using integration by parts saying for example that this factor here is u and this factor here is v and trying to do something with it and if you do that you'll absolutely go, you, you'll get nowhere if you try and solve it, essentially if you try and solve it analytically you won't get the answer out if you try and solve the answer numerically, so you might plug it into Excel or MATLAB or even you might put it onto Wolfram Alpha or something like that you won't get the answer either even, I'd say even a C program probably wouldn't do it for you so numerical methods don't seem to, do, to, to work uh, work with the you know uh, to solve this integral and um, if you were to solve this analytically the first and the most important thing you need to do is to actually look at what this is and this is not a product it's not an integration well I suppose it is a product but it's not a real integration by parts it's not a real UV because if we just if we just manipulate this formula a small bit you will see why so let me rearrange it, so we're going to have the, the um, energy density per unit frequency, frequency interval is equal to 2 pi times Planck's constant over c squared outside of the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of nu cubed over the exponential function times h nu over kt minus 1. And let's integrate it, of course, d nu. And if you look at that, you might say to yourself, this is a quotient. And I don't know if you've realized this, but the best way to solve an integral with a quotient is to do a, a, a separation of, or not a separation of variables, but um, to do a, um, a change of variables, excuse me. All right? That's what you should always try first and foremost when you have a quotient. So let's try and integrate this. And by the way, this would be, this is an integral here. If I'm going to be correct, that's the integral. And so we'll say d nu. All right, so I won't write this section of it anymore. And we're going to integrate this. So, well, what's the what is the kind of obvious um, the, the obvious uh, part or variable change that you're going to do? Well, there's no point leaving it into these constants because that won't do you any good. Similarly, if you just if you just change the variable new, you're going to get nothing really out of it. So, what's left, of course, is the exponent on your exponential. So, let's call the exponent on my exponential x. I'm going to say that's equal to h new over k times t. Therefore, dx d nu is equal to h over kt. And you could say, as a result of that, that um, dx times k times t over h is equal to d nu. Similarly, if you just rearrange this formula here, you'll find that nu is uh, nu is equal to x times k times t over h. All right, so that is the we'll say the work done in order to change the variables of this integral. 
So let's apply though that bit of um, that workings and see what see what we get. So initially, of course, we're going to have this same factor of two pi times Planck's constant over c squared on the outside. The next thing is we're going to have a d nu, and if we look at d nu has this other constant here k t over h, which I'm going to pull out again. If we look at nu, okay, now even nu cubed. So we also have a constant here k t over h. So we need to cube this. So we're going to get k cubed. Oh, that's it, the k cubed t cubed over h cubed. The next thing we need to do is do put in our integral. So it's still going to go from negative to positive infinity. And we're going to get x cubed here. And we're going to get e to the x minus 1 integrated dx. And you might say, well, okay, it looks like we're getting somewhere because this looks like a simplified version. Now, it doesn't actually look like a simplified version at all because it is, it is essentially what we've started out with, as you can see at the top there. But the thing is, the mathematicians are great, and what they've done is they've solved this this integral, and it's one of it, it's solved using uh, it's solved using contour integration. Now, to be honest, I'm not too familiar with contour integration. I don't know. Perhaps it's it's done using a residue. I'm not too sure, and I'm not going to solve that here. It's something that's just known that this particular integral is equal to this particular integral is equal to pi to the four over fifteen. All right, something you shouldn't worry about. If you really want to worry about it, go ask some professor in the mathematics department, and they might help you. If you're, of course, you're in university. If you're not, well, I can't really suggest something for you. So as a result, we're going to find that the total the total power, excuse me, is equal to two pi times h uh, over c squared times k to the four t to the four over h to the four, and that's times pi to the four over 15. So what happens if we do a small bit of cancellation and we're going to find that we have 2 pi over c squared times 15 times, well, I'm going to keep keep uh, t to the 4. This case, this k to the 4 is going to be kept as well. And what can we cancel? I suppose this h can cancel with the, the 4 there and we're going to get on the, on the, the the numerator, the denominator, excuse me, we're going to get h to the 3. Alright? And look, these are all constants except for the t to the 4. And what's be, what we say is, we say that the intensity is equal to sigma times t to the 4. Where sigma is all the constants here except for the t to the 4 component. And that's Stefan's Law. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.